Good morning all you solar fans out there. It is the 2nd of November. It's time for me to do my end of month statistics update for October. But before we start, it's a pretty cold morning this morning on the 2nd of November. So it's making me think my test that I'm trying to do of not using my central heating system at all this winter, using electricity instead to heat my home. It's definitely going to be challenged today. This is the coldest day of the season. But anyway, we're here to talk about um, October statistics, not my heating experiment and test. That'll come in a separate video, hopefully shortly after this one. So let's get straight into it, into the stats. It's been not too bad a month. October's been pretty good, a nice mixture, but um, weather has been very, very odd. It's felt mild, it's felt cold, and we've had torrential downpours and flooding. So um, yeah, it's been a huge mixture, but overall, solar, it's been very good. Configuration wise, we've still got the Huawei 3.6 kilowatt inverter with 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels. We've still got the Solar Edge inverter, 2 kilowatts inverter, 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels. So a total of 6.3 kilowatts of solar panels and 5.7 um, ish kilowatts of inverted power. Still got the Eddy and uh, that heats our hot water and the Zappy, of course, to charge our electric car, which I don't have at the moment. I've sold the Mini. And lastly, the Huawei battery, five kilowatt hours of storage capacity. And if you're wondering what this little box is, it's the Modbus meter that connects to the Solar Edge inverter and it provides the grid monitoring that uh, the Solar Edge app can see. So import and export from the grid. And it's what provides the accuracy that Solar Edge has over the other apps. Solar generation for the month of October was 156 kilowatt hours from the Solar Edge array and 243.31 kilowatt hours from the Huawei array. That equates to 62.41 and 65 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed. That's less than half what we achieved in April this year. Collectively, that means that we generated 399 kilowatt hours for the month of October. Not too bad, but as you can see here, that's quite a big drop from what we've been used to over the last six months. So looking at the last two years, 2020 and 2019, it looks like we've outperformed the last two years in October. So that's really good. But you can see from here that the Solar Edge inverter did quite well, but the Huawei inverter, the blue at the bottom, that didn't perform as well relatively to the last two years. Looking at the day-by-day -day values that are visible here on the Huawei app, you can see that there were only eight days where we had really not a lot of solar at all. So eight days out of the month, that's why I think October was pretty mild really and why it was pretty good solar-wise. Most days we had some decent sunshine. Quickly going back to this generation chart, 399 kilowatt hours for the month. I've often said in my videos that we actually need 500 kilowatt hours to be comfortable for all of our needs in a month. So is it no wonder that this month we imported 88 kilowatt hours from the grid, collectively coming roughly to the 500 kilowatt hours that we magically need? And as you'd expect in October, we've used more of the energy we've generated, so we've exported less to the grid, just 43.8 kilowatt hours. So if you remember, September was the month that we swapped from Octopus Agile to Octopus Go, and we spent £8.57 in September on our energy. With more energy use from the grid, that's gone up, but only £13.67 is all we've spent for October. I can't believe that. That's so cheap. This chart tells a good story about energy prices this year. What we can see is that I was on the Octopus Agile tariff and you can see the price rising throughout the year. There's a few plunge prices in there, but you can see it rising to over 30 pence per kilowatt hour. And that's when I swapped onto the Octopus Go tariff. And you can see uh, as the middle step there, I wasn't using very many kilowatt hours. So the price I was paying per kilowatt hour was roughly around the standard price during the days, not the off peak hours in the middle of the night. But then in October, I've started to use more energy overnight. And you can see that the price has dropped down much lower, closer to the five pence per kilowatt hour that Octopus Go gives you. Scrolling through my daily energy usage of Octopus data, um, what you can see here is I'm only using the uh, last hour of the three hour window that I have with the Go Faster tariff. So I'm not using very much energy first thing in the morning on the early parts of October. But as we get to the 20th of October here, um, I've got a single day where I didn't use any in the early hours, but did use some during the day. This is a very rare occurrence for me to get it wrong and use some energy from the grid at an expensive time. 
The same continues until the 24th of October when my energy changes the date a week early. So I'm uh, heating my hot water out of the uh, cheap period. But then it starts to get colder. And as you can see, I'm starting to use more energy. It's now up to two hours in this three hour window. And the, the 30th, that's the only day where Octopus Agile was actually cheaper than Go. Really windy day with lots of cheap energy overnight. With fewer daylight hours during the month of October, we've started to use the home storage battery a little bit more. So we charged 142 kilowatt hours and discharged 136 kilowatt hours, slightly more than the last few months. The My Energy Zappy stats for the month, they look a little bit odd to me. Um, yes, they're low because we haven't had the Mini on charge very often, so those were the last few charges before I sold it, but it's all showing as grid usage. I don't charge my Mini on the grid, so I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Maybe a little bit from the grid, but some was definitely from solar. And the last number, 103 kilowatt hours of solar energy went through our Eddy device heating our hot water for the month. In total, though, the Yeti used 126 kilowatt hours, which you can't see on this screen. And that was because we did a few boosts of uh, cheap rate energy overnight. So I can account for most of that energy. That's 487 kilowatt hours going in and 482 kilowatt hours that I can account for going out. So just five kilowatt hours through rounding and app discrepancies and all those sort of things. I'm not 100% sure, but those missing 5 kilowatt hours, that could be the difference between the charging of the battery and the discharging of the battery. The losses that are incurred as you convert from DC to AC, etc. And I'll leave you with this chart as the final one. It's showing home energy usage. So I've looked at my home usage that's available through the uh, My Energy app, and I've deducted off the Eddy and the Zappy and the battery data, leaving just what I've used inside the house. September on the left hand side of the chart and then growing in October. What you can see is I'm using more energy in October in the house. I wonder why that could be. Yes, it's getting colder and I'm heating my house with just electricity these days. So that's the next video to come. Good uh, leader into it, isn't it? Um, I'll be explaining what's been going on, how the test is going, how many kilowatt hours of energy we're using. It's a great test to try and work out. Can we actually heat the house with electricity, not a central heating system, the oil boiler that we've currently got? And what are the differences? How does it work differently? How does it feel? And how does it affect the rest of the family? All those sort of things. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Hope that was of interest. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.